Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be playing with the Hero Arts Color Layering Watermelon Stencil. I absolutely love this stencil and we're going to make two cards today using it. So the inks I'm going to be using are Azalea. I'm also going to be using Cotton Candy, Pine, and Kiwi. So let's go ahead and get started. So for today's card, I decided to use sand cardstock, and this is a three-step color layering stencil. So you're gonna have three parts to this. I'm starting out with stencil A, which you'll find right across the bottom, and it's also going to be the one that has the majority of the open circles on it. Now to hold everything in place, I am going to bring in my magnetic mat. Now I did cut this paper to six by six, which is the same size of the stencil, but you can also cut this down to a regular card base size and it will work just fine. I just know I wanna make multiple cards out of this one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and use my little magnets to here, and this is gonna put everything in place so it does not shift on me. Now, if you don't have this kind of magnet, you can also use tape, or if you want to, you can go ahead and use a uh, pixie spray. So I'm going to start out with my Kiwi ink, and this ink is going to be the base coat that I'm going to use today. So I have my blending brush here, and I'm going to go ahead and add this down. Now, I did speed this up just a tad bit, but because this is sand cardstock, you want to put a good amount of this kiwi down so it kind of absorbs into the paper, but you still have your color. So anytime you're using a card base that is not white, you do need to add a little bit more ink and a little bit more pressure to kind of break through that color uh, kind of barrier, which I would call it, in order for you to see your color. So as you can see, I'm just going through here very quickly and just adding in that color. Now again, I want to add it in so I don't see a lot of the sand color, but it's okay if I still see a little bit of it. It's going to be absolutely fine. Once I get this all done, I do try to go back into some areas and just deepen up some areas just to have a little bit of variation within my ink. This is just a good way to kind of deepen up things in certain areas and not actually on all of it. It gives it a nice like kind of tonal look. So once I have this color done, I'm gonna pull that aside and then I can go ahead and remove this first layer. Now I'm gonna come in with stencil number two and that's gonna end up putting down our watermelon slices. Now I do wanna make sure to clean up that mat because I don't wanna pull any of that kiwi into this color. So the color I'm going to start with is the cotton candy. And once again, because I'm going over a uh, paper that's not white, I am gonna put a little bit more pressure into this. And then I'm also going to darken up some areas using an azalea ink. I love this ink. It's a really nice, bright, happy pink. But once again, I'm not using it everywhere. I'm just putting some down here or there just so I can have a little bit of variation in my watermelon slices. I can remove this layer. And as you can see, we now have really cute watermelons. Now it's time to come in with that last layer. Now for this last layer, I want the color to be really deep and strong to kind of pull the difference between that kiwi. So that's when I decided to use pine. This is gonna be a really nice dark green color that's going to work well with that kiwi. And it's gonna allow me to have the lines and the definitions that I need on these watermelons. Now I quickly went ahead and blended that out. Now, before I pull this up, I'm going to clean it up just a little bit because I felt I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer to this card. So a good way to like crank up those inks just a little bit is just to put spray on top of them. I'm a huge fan of the iridescent uh, spray by Hero Arts. It's actually one of my favorite iridescent sprays. So I thought leaving this in place and then shaking this up a little bit and spraying it on top is going to give those watermelons a really cute little fun summer look. So I wanna make sure to shake up that iridescent spray really well. 
And then I am gonna go in kind of heavy handed with this. So as you can see, I'm spraying it all over. And once I have the majority of everything covered, I'm gonna just let it marinate for a second or two, just so it kind of soaks into the paper. And then I'll come back in with my rag and I'm gently tapping this excess up, but at the same time, I'm really like pressing it through the uh, pieces of this stencil. And that's just gonna give me a really fun look. Now, once I have this done, I can go ahead and pull this back. Now, if you wanted to, you could also use the green metallic shimmer spray, I think, or green two-tone metallic spray. Sorry about that. And I think that would look just as gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna just grab my tweezers here and I'm going to pull away that stencil. And look how pretty this looks. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up close to you or close up for you. So you can kind of see this gorgeous shimmer that I was able to achieve by putting that spray on top. And then I have a little bit of shimmer too. All right, before I actually do anything else to this, I do want to heat set this. Like I said, I did spray a lot of that spray. So before I go on to anything else, I'm just gonna heat set this bag. Want to make sure the ink is dry and also to make sure that that shimmer is dry as well. Now, once this is dried, remember I said I wanted to make multiple cards. So I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer here and I'm going to trim down the design, meaning I'm, I'm going to cut any of the excess tan or sand away. So I'm just left with the image. Now, again, remember I said I cut this paper to six by six, so it matched the size of my stencil. At this point now, I just wanna trim my paper down so I just have the design. And that's really easy to do just by spinning my cardstock on every single corner and trimming that down. So right here now, I just have the design. Now it's time to trim down this piece so I can make two cards. So I'm going to use one piece of this is going to be big enough to put onto a regular size card base. So I'm just gonna line that up in my machine or in my cutter, and I'm just trying to spin to see which way I want this design to lay. And once I trim that down, again, I'm gonna have a piece that's gonna be big enough for a card panel. And at first I thought maybe I would trim this down again, but then I was like, well, let's hold on. Let's create the first card before we trim down this piece. Because in my mind, I know what I wanna do, but I wanna just hold on to this first before I end up cutting it. All right, let's go ahead and start building up that first card. So the first card, I wanted to have a really fun green background here. So I trimmed down a piece of Dove White cardstock and I'm spraying that two-tone green metallic spray onto this. I love this spray because it gives me color, but it also gives me a gold shimmer. It's oh so pretty. Now you can check out the tutorial that I have on the Hero Arts channel that has the uh, tutorial on how I use these sprays and you can also check it out on my channel. Now I have that little strip that I cut off first and I decided to grab a sentiment out of the new Lemonade Day stamp set. I thought one of these would be really, really pretty on this card. Now look how gorgeous this is. I have that green two-tone gold background and then I have these fun little strawberries. It almost kind of looks like my, um, my little, watermelon like exploded <laughs> onto my background. I really love this spray and I love the combination of using it with these watermelons. It's really, really a summery look. So I decided to use the uh, Stay Cool sentiment from that Lemonade Day stamp set. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp this down. Now I did make sure that I put down my piece of watermelons so I know exactly where I want this sentiment to be. Now for the sentiment, I decided that I'm going to pull in some black here and I'm going to use my Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink and I'll go ahead and stamp this down. Now, because I have a little bit of shimmer to this paper, 
I am going to stamp this a couple times because I really want the rich, dark black of this to kind of stand up against that background. So anytime you might be using something that has a little bit of shimmer to it, just make sure to stamp your sentiment a few times in order to have that sentiment be like a really nice crisp black. Now, since I have that done, I can go ahead and pull this out of the way. Now, I did want to add a little bit more black to this. So I just have a piece of pitch black cardstock, and I'm going to add this to the top and the bottom of this watermelon panel. I just felt like the watermelon panel against that green was kind of getting a little bit lost. So I decided to go ahead and just grab a strip of paper and I'm just going to trim this down. So nothing fancy here. I'm just going to make sure I measure how much I need for my card. I'll go ahead and trim this down. And like I said, I'm gonna add a little bit to the top and the bottom of that watermelon piece. But instead of having like one large piece, I'm just gonna trim this down in half and glue one top to the bottom and the other one to the uh, top. And then I'll have this really nice kind of seamless background for those watermelons. Now, as you can see here, I can just line that up and it just really makes this watermelon pop just a little bit more compared to just putting it onto that shimmered background. Now you don't have to do this, you could totally just put it down, but I feel like if I add a little bit of black to this, it's actually going to pull in the sentiment color as well. So as you can see, I'm easily gluing that to the top and then I'll go ahead and flip this over or under and you'll see I'll have a piece for the back. Now this piece actually, if I left it together, would not have been big enough to fill this background. So that's just a little tip. Grab those scraps, split them in half, and then you can do this right here, this little technique of like uh, bookmarking in a piece without having to cut a larger piece of a mat for this. So as you can see, I have that all glued down. I have this really nice black at the top and the bottom. And like I said, that's really gonna pull in the black of that sentiment. Now I do wanna grab my paper trimmer and just cut off the excess that I have here. And again, I'm going to put this onto a standard size card base, but I did trim this down just a little bit more than that. All right, let's go ahead and finish building up our card. So now we have our sentiment, we have that great black that's going between the sentiment and our little watermelon color. Everything looks very, very cohesive. And now all I have to do is glue this down to the top. Now, again, like I said, I'm gonna put this on a standard A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. But as I was doing this, I kept thinking, hmm, I think I want to pull in a little bit more of that sand. I feel like it's getting just a tad bit lost. So once I have this all situated and it looks so darn cool, I am going to trim this down and I'm going to mat this onto a piece of sand cardstock. I can just line that up trim that down and I'm just trimming off the sides. I'm not trimming from the top and the bottom, just on the sides. And then this way that um, sandpaper is going to kind of mimic what the black paper is doing. So it's just gonna be a nice thin little border around this piece. But once again, I'm keeping all of the colors consistent here. I'm not going out of this color scheme that I have. So I can use my Hero Arts glue, go ahead and press that down. And again, I only have that sandpaper on the left and the right of my card, not the top and the bottom. And now I can go ahead and put this onto a card base. All right, that is going to be card number one. Super easy to do. I brought in a little bit of a mixed media style with this. And then we're gonna start working on card number two. Now remember, because this piece of paper was big enough that I started with the six by six size, I'm going to be able to have two cards with this. 
So this is kind of like our mixed media style using this simple way to showcase this stencil right across the middle of our card. And now we can go ahead and start working on card number two. Now, as I was just finishing this up, I felt I wanted to add a little bit more black to this. So I did kind of grab some of my Black Hero Arts enamel dots. And this is, I believe, in the neutral set. I grabbed some of the black and I kind of splattered that, those enamel dots around. And I think I like that a little bit better. Now for this card, I'm just going to grab me a top folding uh, card base. I love these card bases from Hero Arts. And I'm going to go ahead and trim down this piece. Now this piece has been trimmed down so I have a nice white border around it, but I need a sentiment. And at this point I didn't wanna put the sentiment right across the middle on the panel. So what I'm going to do is trim this down. But first I need to grab out a sentiment. And I want a sentiment that can go straight across my card. So I decided to use the happy birthday out of the um, picnic basket stamp set. This is a new release as well. And just having that straight birthday across this card is going to keep this card really, really simple. So again, I don't want to stamp necessarily on top of this card. I do want to opening for that happy birthday. So what I'm going to do is grab in my paper trimmer and I'm just going to scoot everything under, including the sentiment. I just want to see how much of an opening I need. So I'll go ahead and cut right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove that stamp set. And then I'm going to trim out a about a quarter of an inch or so just from the other side of that piece. So I'll go ahead and line that up and trim that out. So now when I put my card back together, I'm gonna have a little bit of an opening to stick that sentiment. So let me show you real quick. So I have the top, I have the bottom, and look, now I have a middle portion that I can go ahead and stamp in my sentiment. Now for the sentiment, I decided to pull in a little bit more of that green. Keeping my colors really, really simple on this card by not adding any additional black. So I'm just going to line everything up, place down my magnet, and this is just going to allow me to have everything in place before I stamp. So I have my sentiment down exactly where I want it onto my card base, because remember, this is my card base. I see that that's lined up perfectly. Now again, remember I said I want to bring in a little bit of that green. So I'm going to bring a little bit of that pine in. And I think this green will look so pretty right between both of those panels and not be like really jarring as if I had stamped it in black. I am gonna stamp it one more time because I do want it to be a little bit deeper in color. I can walk my fingers across that and now I have a perfect placement for my sentiment. All right, let's go ahead and quickly finish up this card. Now, everything that I use today will be linked in the description box below, but also head on over to the blog because I'll have some additional close-up photos for you, and then you'll really be able to see the sparkle that's going on with this card. So as I get ready to glue these pieces down, I'm just trying to make sure that I have evenness at the top in the bottom of my card. Once I have everything lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my glue and put this into place. So this is a great way if you have stencils and you necessarily don't really wanna use them as just like a cover panel, like we would normally do our cards. Go ahead and cut them on an angle, divide them out like this, cut a little strip off to make a second card. Just make sure to stretch that panel as much as you can in order to create more than one card. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this top piece on. Now I did leave a little bit of extra room right underneath the happy birthday 
because I felt I wanted to pull in a little bit more of that green. So again, I went right back to my Hero Hues enamel dots because I love these things. And I'm just going to grab out a few green ones and place it underneath. And that little bit of a touch really finishes off this card. Now, if you're excited about seeing things like this with the stencils, recreate them. You can do this with so many stencils and you also can do them with the bold prints. So keep that in mind as well. If you're making these panels, go ahead and stretch your creativity with them. Make multiple cards. Just remember that it's all about creating and kind of stretching your supplies. All right, I'm gonna put down that last enamel dot. And I would tell you these Hero Arts tweezers are like my favorite thing in my stamp room because they really help me with these enamel dots, also with gems and everything else. All right, once I get everything in place, that's going to be card number two. All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for watching. And here is our first card, which I love. And then I'm gonna bring back in that mixed media piece that we did. And that's a wrap for today. All right, I will see you guys back here soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.